All right, today I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes look into how I create my thumbnails for my videos on YouTube. Of course, the program that I use to do this is GIMP. It stands for the GNU Image Manipulation Program. It is a free and open source alternative to something like Photoshop. Um, I was going to say that it's an alternative to paint, but this actually does quite a bit more than paint is able to do. Um, maybe not quite as much as Photoshop is able to do. I've never really been into like professional photo editing or professional graphics work, anything like that. But I've heard from people who are that there's certain things GIMP just isn't able to do. So for, I guess, super professionals, they have to get cucked by Photoshop and pay a shitload of money. But for people like me that just upload YouTube videos about how to do stuff in Linux, GIMP is more than sufficient. Uh, so let's open up a file real quick to take a look at uh, basically the type of things that I do to make a thumbnail in YouTube. Um, now the first thing that you might notice is the resolution. So I make my thumbnails almost always in a 1280 by 720 resolution, so not full HD, standard HD. And the reason that I do that is because YouTube has a file size limitation for uh, your thumbnails. YouTube limits you to, I believe it's a two megabyte thumbnail. And it's actually kind of difficult to create an image in full HD, especially when you have a lot of layers like this and have it be under two megs without like basically having to cut the quality of it a little bit. So I just do it in 720p. It makes the most sense. Um, so to do something like this, um, I find usually a background. So like this is just a background of patchwork. Like I think I literally looked up patchwork quilt on Google and that's how I was able to find this. Um, so I basically will put something like that as the background. And then for text, well, this here isn't really uh, text per se. This is like just the DWM logo. Oh, I've got the wrong tool selected. Uh, so this also is your move tool. This will let you move things around. Um, so let me just put this on the top real quick. So this is the DWM logo, I guess. And um, I just found this again on Google. Uh, cleaned it up a little bit around the edges because there was like some gray that I just didn't really like on the edges. You can still kind of see it a little bit. Like if I zoom in, so this is the zoom tool, by the way. And by default, it zooms in. You can hold control to make it zoom out. So yeah, I'm seeing a little bit of gray here that I missed. I guess I was just being lazy or something like that. Um, so you can crop that out. Now, one of the easiest ways to crop things out, like if you're specifically trying to remove a certain color, then I think the fuzzy select tool is pretty good for that. Like you can um, sort of drag it and it's color sensitive. So like you can see here, it's removing the gray. Um, if I were to do it a little bit more extreme, so like basically I'm dragging it in and you can see that the perimeter grows more and more. Yeah, so at this point it's starting to select um, like into the black a little bit. So like if I deleted this, you see it's gonna look really bad. Like it's, it's basically making it translucent now at this point. So that's not what we wanna do. Typically, I'll just do something like that, right? Select a little bit of gray that's inside. Um, so that's how I do that. Now, to get the, uh, the layered effect, like if we go back to how it's layered here. So to get this layered effect where the text really pops out, the way that you do that is as follows. Um, you want to go ahead and select your layer that you have. So we're looking at the black one here and you want to do alpha to selection. Now, what this does, as you can see, it created like a little uh, trail of ants going all around the perimeter, both the outside and the internal perimeter of uh, this logo here. And then what I do is I come up here to, well, first actually, I'll create a new layer. So just right click over here in your layers slash brushes area, 
create a layer, doesn't matter what you call it. Um, make sure that the width and height are the same, it should be. And you want your layer fill type to be transparent because obviously if you do it as white, then it's gonna do that. And that's not what we want. So create a new layer, make it transparent. Again, these are all the default values, so you shouldn't really have to change anything here. So now we've got um, this alpha selection that's still here, but we're in a new layer. So like if I were to do um, something like this, let's fill it with purple. So you can see here that we just created this, um, like an exact replica of this DWM logo. But what we actually wanna do is to get this outline, we want to come up here now to select, and we want to grow it. And usually I'll do a growth of two. Um, here I might have done a growth of one since I did a double layer here, but like if you do a growth of two, then you'll see that it expands the pixels in every single direction by two, even internally here. So now if I were to fill this in as purple and then get rid of the selection and then put it behind the black text, now you can see that there's just a little bit of purple kind of sticking out around it, almost gives it like an aura or something, like it's going Super Saiyan. Well, not really, if it's purple. It would need to be like yellow and have blonde hair and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, you just do that and then repeat it again to get a double layer effect. Um, obviously, you want to grow the, um, like the purple in this case because we already grew it once. So then you need to grow that again by two pixels or however many put it underneath again, and then that's how you get that multi-layered effect. And you can do the same thing with text. So that's what I have going on uh, up here. Like I just typed out the text, patching made easy. Actually, I'll just go ahead and create something new over here. We'll do like uh, mental outlaws channel is the best spell it in Ebonics and uh, yeah so grow the text a little bit like we'll do I don't know maybe a 90 point font and it'd be better if it's the uh, front layer um that's weird it's like still oh okay I thought it was behind but it's just blending in with this let's get rid of that it's making things look confusing all right, so same idea here. Just right click over here in your layers field, alpha to selection, and then create a new layer. And then select grow, do it by, I don't know, let's do it by three. Make it look a little fat this time. And then we'll do, maybe we'll do blue. Let's see how blue and purple looks together. All right, fill that in. And then again, you wanna have it behind because otherwise it's just gonna overlap with it. And then boom, that's how you get that. And um, if you want to drag this to a different spot in the screen, so maybe you'd get the idea that um, like wherever you created this, you're like, oh, I want it to be over here since it's left centered. And then maybe you try to like, you know, line it up and, and do some silly stuff like this, but that's not what you wanna do. See, you wanna do it the smart way. You want to lock these two layers together. And so now I can drag them together at the same time. So now they're lined up, they look good, they don't look silly or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the gist of how I create my files for YouTube. I mean, my uh, thumbnails for YouTube. Oh, and also I typically export them as a PNG. Um, so like I'll just call it some generic thing and then export it. And then I just leave everything as the defaults. And uh, I actually don't want to overwrite that file. Let's call it like, there we go. <laughs> now it has a different name. And then export it and then boom, there you go. Attach it to the video. Um, yeah, there we go. Now that's kind of the conclusion of how I make my thumbnails for YouTube. 
Let me know if you guys would be interested in a series of GIMP tutorials. I mean, GIMP is probably one of the most popular free and open source programs that are out there. Well, I guess maybe Chromium technically, but Chromium is like, uh, I don't know. I like GIMP more than I like Chromium. <laughs> so let me know if you guys are interested in learning more about this program, learning more about uh, just free software in general. Like I know I cover a lot of Linux and um, more like programming specific tools on here, but there's a lot of like, I don't know, tools for regular people that are free and open source. Like you got LibreOffice, right? That's basically Word, but free and open source. You can compile a resume, you can compile stuff for, um, uh, school, whatever it is you need to do that you would normally do with Word, could probably get away with it with Writer. Yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Peace out, guys.